What's up everyone? Welcome back to another Jupyter Notebooks tutorial. And in this one, I'm going to talk about IPython widgets and I'm going to walk you through how I make this simple example you see here. So I've got a few sliders which control the amplitude, phase, and frequency of a sine wave in a matplotlib plot. So this is a real simple example that will hopefully get you started with widgets. So let's get started. So like always, I've uploaded my notebook to my GitHub page, so you can just follow the link in the description. And the notebook I'm referring to is this widgets example. And you can either follow along in GitHub, where it posts all the code, or you can download and follow along in Jupyter Notebook. So what I'm going to do is start a new notebook because it's not a lot of lines of code. So we'll, we'll go through this together. So I'll select Python default to start a new notebook. So what widgets are, well, they're basically little GUI tools such as sliders, drop down menus, um, even some cool ones like calendar pickers and color pickers and font pickers, things like that stuff you you'd see in full applications. So in this video, we're going to be just using the sliders. But if you want to learn more about the IPython widgets, I'll add a link to this site. And basically, this is the, um, the documentation for the Jupyter slash IPython widgets. So you'll find the list of all the widgets and then how to interact with them to make them actually do things, which um, we're going to be talking about in this video also. So we're not going to be going over all of these, just getting a taste of it. But once you get a taste of it, it's enough to get you started. And then you can go off and um, use these to do a lot more complex things. So let's jump over to our new notebook. And the first thing we're going to do is our import. So we're going to import IPy widgets as widgets. This is going to be all our tools like the slider, the drop down menu, um, all the different widgets are in this class. And then to display them, we're going to do from capital IPthon dot display. We're going to import display. And then for plotting, we're going to use matplotlib, like always, matplotlib.pyplot as plt. <clears throat> and then for some numerical stuff, we'll do numpy as np. Cool. And then for the back end that we're going to use for matplotlib, this time we're going to use matplotlib and bag. For some reason, we have to use this one when we're using matplotlib with IPython widgets. I've noticed for Python 2.7, you can use matplotlib notebook, but for three, you have to use this one. So let's go ahead and run this cell. Then let's get started with our next cell. So the first thing I want to do is create our X variable. So we're going to use np lin space and we'll go from zero to two and we'll do a thousand points. Then let's set up our figure and our axes. So we'll do fig comma ax is equal to plt subplots. And I'm just going to do one subplot and let's make the fig size um, let's do 10 by 4. And then let's add a title to it. We'll do PLT soup title. And since we're doing a sine wave, let's call it sine wave. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a few widgets. That way you can just see what they look like. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is we're going to create three widgets and they're going to be three sliders. It's going to be the amplitude, the phase, and the frequency of the sine wave. So let's, uh, how about this? We'll call the first one amp and it's going to be widgets.float slider. And what we'll do is we'll set the min value equal to one. We'll set the max equal to 10. And then the actual value that it starts at, we'll start it at one. And then we'll give it a description, which will be equal to 
we'll just call it um, amp cool. And then if I want to display this, I could just do display amp. So if I run this, oops. Um, so if I run this, you can see I get the matplotlib figure. And you can also see that I get this little slider called amp. And because I did a float slider, you can see I get decimal points. And yeah, so the minimum value is one, the max value is 10. And if I were to run this again, you'll see that the value is one. So if I were to change this to four, it starts at four. I can change the ranges, et cetera, et cetera. I can even change the um, output. Um, by default, it does two decimal places, but I can make it one or five, however many I want. And um, you can read more up on the options. You can do vertical or horizontal. By default, it's horizontal. So that just gives you uh, what it looks like visually. So now I'll go ahead and add the other two sliders. So I'm just going to copy and paste. Oops. And uh, this one I'm going to call phase. This one I'm going to call freak for frequency. And let's see, I'm gonna do, for the phase, I'm gonna go from zero to five. And the value that I'm gonna start at is zero. We'll have it zero phase. And for the frequency, we're gonna go from one to 10. And we'll start the value at one also. So this is basically the same as the amplitude. And we'll call this one phase. And this one will be freak. Cool, so if I run this, oops, I have to display all of them. So phase and freak. So you can see I get three sliders and right now they don't really do anything, but um, we've created them. So the trick is to make it so when we move them or change them, they're actually going to do something. And in this case, we're going to link them to a function. So let's show how to do that now. So next, what I want to do is define the function that is going to be run each time the slider is changed. And what that function will do is it will replot the sine wave within our matplotlib axes. So before we do that, what I want to do is define or explain the equations that we're going to use for that function. So let's do that in a new markdown cell. So what we're going to do is we're going to call the amplitude A. So we're going to say A is equal to amplitude. And then we will call phi will be, that will be our phase. And then the Greek letter new will be our frequency. Cool. So if I run that, we get A is amplitude, phi is phase, and nu is frequency. And then the equation that we're going to use is going to be A times sine. And the sine is going to be 2 um, times pi. And then it's going to be um, nu times x plus phi, and then we'll close those off. Cool, so that's our equation, a times sine of two pi times nu x plus phi. All right, so now let's get to that equation, or let's get to that uh, function. So we're gonna call it update plot, and it's gonna take amp, phase and uh, freak. Cool. And every time we do a function, you should always give it a doc string. So what I'm going to say is um, this function gets called or this function is linked to the sliders and it re plots the sine uh, the sine wave um, when the sliders are changed. Cool. So we've got our doc string 
And okay, so the first thing I want to do is let's see, we want to let's define our y. So our y function is going to be exactly what we said there, or we defined above. So y is going to be the amp times our sine function, so mp sine, and then we're going to do two times, oops, two times np dot pi. And then that's going to be multiplied by um, the frequency times x plus our um, phase b. Cool. So I think that that looks good there. And then, oh, also we need to we need to clear our axes every time this thing gets called because. If we don't clear it, the lines are just gonna build up and up and up, and then we're gonna have a ton of lines. And we really just wanna show one sine wave at a time. So it's gonna be ax.clear, and that's gonna clear the axes. Cool. So now that we've got our y, all we, what we need to do now is plot it. So we're gonna do ax.plot, and it's gonna be x, y, and for now we'll Let's leave the label out for now. And then um, let's just show it. Let's do plt.show. All right, so now we've got our function made, but we need to set up the interaction. We need to link those sliders to our function. So now we need to link our sliders to that function. And with IPython widgets, they've made it extremely simple. So all you need to do is just call widgets dot interactive interactive and then what we do is we give it our function so update plot and then you just give it your widgets so we've got amp equals amp and then we've got phase equals phase and then we've got freak equals freak so what I'm doing is I'm calling, I'm saying which function we're gonna use, and then that function has three arguments, and what I do is just say what widgets correspond to those three arguments. And so now what's happening is it's linking the value of the widgets to the arguments of the function. So every time one of them's changed, it reruns this thing with the new value of that widget. And another thing too is we're calling this here. We don't have to display the widgets. So I need to get rid of this line, otherwise it'll double display it. So now when we run this, everything should work. So let's try it, let's run it. And you can see we've got our sine wave. And if I change the amplitude, you can see the y -axis, the y axis scale changing. If I change the phase, you can see it's moving left and right. And then if I change the frequency, you can see that we're getting a higher frequency and smaller frequency wave. So this is basically what I wanted to get set up. And now I'll just do a few little things to uh, spice it up, make it a little nicer. So what I can do is let's define a label that will be the label that goes in the, um, the legend. So I'm just gonna call it um, unit. And it's just going to be a string, and we're going to say amp is equal to something we'll fill in, and then we will um, we'll add the units of it. Let's just say that these are going to be, let's say it's a pressure wave, so we'll do PSI, and then we'll add a next line character, and then we'll do phase is equal to something we'll fill in. And the units of the phase are going to be, um, we'll just call it seconds. And then next line character, and we'll do freak is equal to some value. And the units of the frequency are going to be in hertz. Cool. So then in the plot, we can then do um, label is equal to units and then we can just format it to have the value of amp phase 
and a freak. So now when we run this, oops, I have to then, um, let's then give the legend. So we'll do ax.legend and let's do, normally I do location best, but I don't want this thing to be jumping around as we adjust the slider. So I'm just gonna do location equals um, one. So now when I change the amplitude, you can see the value changing in the legend. Same with phase and same with frequency. Cool. So then the last thing I want to do is just, um, let's give it a um, X label. So we'll do set X label. And since we said it's going to be in seconds, we'll do, um, let's do S and then for Y label, X dot set Y label. Let's do, um, PSI. And then, um, I also want to set the X limits. X dot set X limb because I don't want any white space or any like extra room on the side. So we'll do X. Let's do the first X and then we'll go to the last X. So now it's, oops, it didn't work. Spelt label wrong. Okay, double check. Cool, so now we're not showing any white on those sides. And yeah, so we've got PSI and seconds. So this could be like a sound wave or a pressure wave traveling through some medium like air or liquid or something like that. And I think that's gonna be it. So really simple example. Um, in later videos, we'll try out some other widgets and feel free to go to the IPython documentation and have a look through these, um, all the different widgets that you can try. But I think this is a good example to get started with. And on a side note, you might, if anyone noticed in the beginning, um, I was doing the dashboard view. Oops. So let me just, uh, adjust my dashboard view for you. So what dashboard view is, it's, it's a way to hide all the cells that you have in the background and just focus on the stuff that you want to see. So, um, it doesn't come built in with um, Jupyter Notebooks, but it's a really quick download. And um, it's a nice way to just focus on the, um, the things that you want to focus on, such as the widgets and the graphs and any markdown that you have. So I'll save that for another video. But um, yeah, for those of you who noticed in the beginning, I did have the, um, I did have the dashboard view going. So. Yeah, so like I said, that's it for this video. If you've got any questions or suggestions or comments, um, feel free to ask. There's, um, you can always comment on the video and feel free to use the Facebook group. I'll add a link in the description and you feel free to post in there or even contact me directly with questions. And if you like the video, um, you know, give it a like. If you don't, let me know if there's anything I can do to change. And a big thank you to everyone who's been watching, who's been supporting, who's been giving feedback, and um, it really, really means a lot to me. So thanks everyone. And I'll be back for more soon. Later.